Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we have guest Alexia Eisenhower with me. Alexia is a biohacking expert versed in many areas around physical, energetic, and spiritual detoxing. We may do a series of shows around this topic because it is so vast, but today we're going to focus our energy on the importance of physical parasite cleansing, why and how we should detox these little nasty invaders, where they come from, all the you know, dynamics around parasites. And I had originally seen Alexia speak on the Journey to Truth podcast. And I was like, yes, I I need her to come on my show because I have been physically uh, detoxing a variety of things and learning my own, you know, tools and techniques on how to get rid of these little nasty critters in our body. And so when I saw Alexia, I thought I need to bring her on the show because we need to do a much more detailed show on this topic. So Alexia, I am so happy to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I love Journey to Truth. They're a wonderful conduit of information and they're doing such a good job getting info out there. So I'm glad you found me. And this is always a fun topic to go over with people. Uh, people like the creepy crawly talk. <laughs> So yeah, it's fun. You know, it's it's fascinating to me because I when I'm working with clients, it's really fascinating to me to recognize that many people aren't even aware that they have parasites or even aware that they have heavy, heavy metals or all of these invaders within our body because we are being filled with environmental toxins daily in our food, our water, our air, you name it. We're being pol- literally, physically, emotionally, yeah. energetically put, polluted, right? So, you know, when... When we move through this this entire you know show, there's going to be a lot of things that may um, you know kind of be aha moments for people, and I'm sure I'll even have some aha moments in this because I know Lexi, you have done your research and you have gone down this rabbit hole, and not only through the physical, but you've gone down the energetic rabbit hole, the emotional rabbit hole, and so you know I can, I can kind of chime in on the things that I've learned through my process, but I'm really i um, interested in hearing more about your story and telling us briefly about how you were led to having a deeper understanding about detoxing it, parasites specifically. I had autism tics. I had depression, stage three kidney disease. Looking back, I had a bunch of stuff wrong with me and I was overweight and unhappy and I needed to cure myself. So I knew that there were people always talking about these suppressed cures and I needed it at a necessity. I didn't have health insurance. So I just went to my witchy friends on Facebook and I'm like, what are you guys doing? And then I basically realized that it's parasites and heavy metals together that cause every problem we have. I reversed my stage three kidney disease and I realized my autistic tics went away. Um, I realized my eyesight got better. I realized that I was once a hoarder and now my house was in order and I got rid of like 80% of my belongings and I was able to keep a clean home and my whole life changed. Basically, I had to, me and all these nurses who saw how to reverse parasitic damage, inoculation damage, we had to start whispering in everyone's ear who was getting COVID-19, like, hey, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, chlorine dioxide, these are natural oxidizers in our bodies, at least chlorine dioxide and hydrogen peroxide. Your body makes it. So we're just giving our body back what it normally is supposed to be doing. And we got made fun of. We got laughed at. You can't go into your doctor and expect to have these conversations with him. A lot of doctors are now awakening to ozone and they have ozone machines. So that's really cool. I'm happy about that. But a lot of this stuff wasn't allowed to be talked about for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I I started going down these rabbit holes probably 15 or 20 years ago when I started to struggle with fibromyalgia myself. And I worked in the healthcare industry and uh, I, gosh, it's probably been 20 years now since I've had an inoculation. 
but I was the one who was saying, I don't, I don't want that flu shot. I don't want that. And I was being looked upon as the weird person. And I remember my boss pulling me into the office and telling me I was one of the only ones in the, in the corporation that hadn't had the, the vaccine. And I was like, well, I'm okay with that. Because at that time, I was actually going down the path of holistic medicine. I was learning about these herbs. I was learning about these alternative medicines. And I began to recognize that the people in the office who were getting uh, the regular flu shots were actually getting severely sick after the fact. And I wasn't. And so they, some of them were actually coming to me and asking me, what are you doing? You know? And, uh, I was like, listen, I, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm using herbal remedies. I'm learning about minerals. I'm learning about detoxing. I'm learning about parasites and heavy metals and all of this. And, you know, at that time, 15, 20 years ago, people looked at me like I had four heads and they still maybe look at me like I have two, but, you know, that's why it's so important. And I know that this show may be a little bit uh, more unconventional to some of you. And I want you to kind of listen through this show because Alexi and I are going to be talking about things that, uh, you know, aren't inside of the medical box, so to speak. We're going to be talking about things that our body naturally pr produces, things that we have been um, kind of suppressed from the truth. And uh, this could be a little triggering for, for some of you. I know it was for me when I first started waking up to this, right? And we all go through this. And Alexi and I are here with open hearts and open intentions to share the knowledge that we have, right, Lexi? <laughs> because it, you said it perfectly. <laughs> I don't want anyone to hear this and fear feel fearful afterwards because everything we talk about can be reversed. To me, I just put oxygen, salt, and sunlight first, mm -hmm. and that gets you a long, long ways. That gives so you mineral basic. So basic. basic. I don't even go crazy, and that's when people are popping things. They don't know where it came from and doing drugs. They don't know where it was sourced from. And then they look at me like I'm crazy for putting stomach acid back in them. I'm like, yeah. you guys, we're just going back to basics here. It really is. And, you know, I was married to a pharmaceutical rep for 10 years. So I got to see a very different side of the, of that industry. And, you know, at that time I was not well-versed in uh, the natural organic ways that our body works, right? And so I too, at that time was taking certain medications for depression and anxiety and uh, not really understanding the deeper root cause of my, my ailments and my issues. And I was also seeing the, the monetary side of it. The I was working in organ transplant, so I was seeing recipients paying thousands and thousands of dollars a month for these medications. Meanwhile, my, my ex-husband was coming home from these research studies and telling me that a large amount of these medications are placebo. And so I that was maybe part of my awakening process, at least in the healthcare aspect. And that was a that triggered me a lot. That was a really difficult time for me because I was working in healthcare and I was seeing uh, people really dependent on medications. And I was seeing my transplant recipients very uh, dependent on it. But then at that time, I was also learning and researching on my own these holistic measures. And so, you know, for those of you listeners out there, if you are, you know, no matter what stage you are in, if you're in the denial stage, I was there. If you're in the, okay, I'm opening myself up to learning more stage. Okay, I'm still skeptical, but I'm not sure about holistic medicine stage. Or if you're in the completely, I am totally holistic now and I want nothing to do with that stage. Wherever you are in this process, just keep an open mind and an open heart for what we're going to share today, because like I said, this is a lot of information and it, it's a lot to digest. Literally, we're going to be talking about digestion <laughs> and how that plays a role. So Lexi, how, how and where do we get these physical parasites? This is the funny thing, because you said it doesn't matter what stage you are, have an open mind. And the truth... Uh, makes everybody mad. Before I got started in this, um, I was on Adderall and I didn't understand how I wasn't losing weight because in theory I should have been, I was very active and very, but I could never get rid of that lower part of your belly, mm -hmm. like that, the pooch and I don't have a kid, so it's not a mom pooch. So I'm like, why I, I lost all this weight. I'm doing everything right. I'm working out. And why do, why do I have this 
little pooch at the, the bottom yeah, of my belly. <laughs> when you realize parasites are in the lower half of your low, yeah. big intestines, you realize why you have the pooch. And when you clean out, there's a biofilm, mucoid plaque. It looks like a big black inner tube for a bike. And it's yeah surrounding your lower intestines and the, it's really just a huge apartment complex for all these bugs to live and Thousand, they hide like out of thousands right can potentially live in us at any hundred time? i mean mind you a lot of them are single cell organisms they're mm -hmm. tiny you can't even see them to the naked eye but they're there and they have the ability to take over your mind literally so when we look at schizophrenia bipolar disorder those go away after you kill bugs because you're not hearing voices in your head. But these bugs literally have the ability to send synapse messages to your brain. Totally. And when I was so. cleansing, when I first started parasite cleansing, like my in the initial stages, I had such negative thoughts that were coming up to the surface. And I knew I had to push through that because it was almost like they were saying, stop the cleanse, stop the cleanse. And and I was like, no, I am not stopping this cleanse. These little boogers are trying to literally get me to stop trying to kill them off, you know? They and are. so there is an aspect to the physical cleansing that will affect your mind as well. And we can definitely yeah. talk about that because I know personally I had that experience. Not so um, much now during the maintenance stage, but during the initial parasite cleansing stage. <laughs> there are two stories and scenes from two completely different parts of the world that describe cleansing perfectly. Um, one is a scene from Modern Family. Mitch and Cam, the gay husbands, they go on fast and you see day by day Cam fasting and fasting is like the oldest way to kill parasites because they are in our intestines because they're eating our food they're taking our nutrients they're eating our vitamins not us you're feeling them yeah. so when you do fast and it shows a funny version of the guys going through day by day and you get mad because the bugs are what want to eat you're mm -hmm. fine not eating for 30 days you really are <laughs> you're not going to die sorry the holocaust literally proved this it's horrible but it's the bugs that want to eat and they will make you go crazy. They will make you mean. Crave and sugar, all, crave things. They yeah. eat sugar. That's what alcoholism is. It's mm -hmm. these parasites wanting the sugar in a tincture form, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and then also the Bible. Jesus has to go to the desert for 40 days and he's doing the same thing that the That's Mitch it. and Cam are doing. <laughs> and he hears the demons in his head going, just eat, just go back. It's fine. You can stop. We no, and they, and he just has to sit there and not eat. And it's so funny, a gay couple on an ABC show and Jesus explain how you feel during detox. You get mad, you get Have angry. Fun. Yeah. It's a, it's a war in your head. It's the invisible enemy. It really, really is. So Lexi, what are some of the symptoms that people may present with to show that they need cleansing, you know, just some of the basic ones. And I know for me, it was cravings. Oh my gosh, just craving things and uh, anxiety. Addiction, cravings are going to be your top mm -hmm. thing. And even people who aren't on pharmaceuticals or street drugs or nicotine, they think that they aren't an addict, but we don't realize how much, how dirty this place we live in is. There's so many toxins that are like drugs. So when you do start detoxing, everyone's watched a movie where someone's detoxing off of heroin or something. That's kind of what happens to all of us because we don't realize we are getting these drugs out of us that we didn't even know were in us. And you kind of feel, you don't realize that they were a problem until they're gone. So you actually realize more symptoms that were parasitic once you heal than before, like problems sleeping, um, indigestion. First thing is if you have heartburn, it's not too much acid. It's not enough stomach acid. Yes, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. So people Lord, are doing yes, the wrong thing right then and there. So if to me, if someone has wrinkles, um, 
if they have gray hair, I'm like, you you have a parasite. I can prove it. I see it on it's you. Eating so eating copper specifically with the gray hair. Yeah. So it's yes. minerals, mineral deficiencies because the parasites are eating exactly. the minerals. <laughs> exactly. Do you have anxiety? The top number one thing with parasites is anxiety. And we're seeing that rampant these past five to 10 years. Everyone has anxiety attacks. And I'm not making fun of people. It's being made to us. We're being made to be in this fight or flight response. So we don't make cognitive, you can't make like good ideas or good conscious yeah. decisions mm -hmm. if you're in a fight or flight response. And that's what they're keeping all of these people in. It's horrible. So, I mean, uh, look at us too, because I know you and I were both in that too, right? Oh, I mean, I suffered I was there. With severe anxiety and panic attacks. And after all of this cleansing, it is like, I am a much calmer person. <laughs> yes. Um, I was neurotic straight up. Like I was scared of so many things and these parasites make you fearful. Like they, they're fearful of dying and a lot of things will kill them. So then you think that's your fear and it's not your fear. It's so weird how they work. Um, and some people give in to those bugs and like an incubus is going to be like, oh, stay away from them because that incubus is very much, this is where a physical bug in your ovaries or prostate could literally affect. This is where the astral connection goes. They're the same thing, you guys. Um, getting rid of these bugs that we hold in our womb space are making people not have kids. This is why my whole channel is about going slow because Really, this is how I go about it. You have, everyone wants to see the bugs hit the toilet. It's a fun, it's I'm fun. I'm not going to. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I don't either, but I get the pictures every full moon going, look what I've passed. <laughs> I'm always scared to open my phone on the full moon. I'm like, oh, good for you. Thanks it's you like they're really showing you their baby. About it. <laughs> they're so excited, but that is wonderful feeling because you are like, okay, I'm feeling yucky. These are the fruits of my labor. I'm doing it. I'm doing the work. And a lot of people need that. But realistically, I want you to even go slower than seeing the bugs hit the toilet because I want you to get the single cell organisms in your white blood cells. Everyone right now, pause the video, go look up white blood cells eat parasite or kill parasite and you will see all of these white blood cells take down worms that are this big wow. and in seconds so our body should be able to kill these worms um and dispose of them properly and work together but our blood white blood cells are being turned off by intracellular parasites and you can literally see in like if you look up intracellular parasite you can see microscope pictures of our blood cells with little guys in them so they're not going to kill kill a big parasite if they have a little driver telling them not to so i'm totally cool with taking like wormwood clove um Black, Black walnut, walnut. Mm -hmm. uh, high sop, frankincense, that kind of stuff is going to kill your white blood cell parasites. So your white blood cells start coming back online and they can kind of help out with the bigger bugs mm -hmm. without overloading your body. And also a lot of people, you're going to have die off reactions, which are called Herxheimer Let's reactions. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have like a whole two hour video on it because it is that big. And we tell you how to negate the symptoms like, but everyone kind of has to have Herx once to realize that you can't go hardcore on detox and it takes you getting sick <laughs> with Herx one night to go, okay, I can't go that hard. Um, yeah. Cause we get come home, right? You're like, I'm getting everyone rid of all these excited. bugs. <laughs> everyone, everyone sees there's bugs in them and they're like, oh my God, get them out of me. And everyone has that feeling. And I'm like, don't go too hard. You're going to make yourself sick. And it's very much like keep calm and go at a, going slow wins the race because going fast is going to make you sick. And then you're never going to want to feel that way again. And then you're not going to do it. Or so you'll stop. And I've seen that with clients, they'll start detoxing and then they get a rash and then they stop right? Oh yeah. The rash is the first part. You're going to have a rash for three months, baby. Yeah. Get used to it. Like, and like that, I'm just like, no, the rash is, is proof. I'm like, it's getting out of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah. Rashes happen. You'll have just, 
the feeling of allergies, which ironically, I had horrible allergies. I had, if I drank pine needle tea like five years ago, six years ago, I would have oh, died. Me too. I would have died. Literally mm -hmm. anaphylactic shock. So uh, again, there's a lot of fake detox stuff that gets pushed around there like it's nothing, but I would have died from that. So I couldn't start with a heavy duty detox from a 3,000 pound pine tree. Mm -hmm. That's not going to do good for a hundred pound little girl who's allergic to pine. Like it's yeah. not good, but technically the feeling you feel during allergy season, that's her, that's Herxheimer. Mm -hmm. You're breathing in all of these pollen that is the pollen in the plant. The plant doesn't want the baby seed to get eaten by a parasite. So it has antiparasitics. This is why plants have antiparasitic properties because they need to fight off parasites. So basically during allergy season, it's all of these baby bugs trying to survive or seeds trying to survive without being eaten by bugs. So everyone starts having allergies because yes, you're, herx you're herxing. This is natural. This is good. Get it all out of you. But what do people do? They take stuff to keep all the allergies inside. Mm them. Mm -hmm. Ew. It's to dry up the mucus when we really want to eliminate the mucus. We need right? to just stand over the toilet or sink and just <laughs> let it drip out of us. It's disgusting, but that's what needs to happen. And everyone fights Herxheimer reactions. I'm like, no, go into it, give into it. So yeah. And it, it and it's cleansing that lymphatic system, the blood system, yeah. the, the, the glandular system, the, the, the organs, everything. And yeah. So, you know, there's a variety of bugs too. It's not like you just have one. You've got, like you said, there's the eggs, the larva, the adult bugs, the different sizes of, of bugs. They're in your uh, nasal canal. And there's a little, for kids out there in school, we were to watch um, Osmosis Jones. And Osmosis <laughs> Jones is a really cool way to show how these bad bugs act because they go to your nasal cavity because any kind of medicine you take is in your blood. So the nasal cavity is the only part of your body that doesn't have any blood because it's a cavity. So they all hide out here. And um, when there's a part of cleanse where all of your nasal cavity will just drain. So I tell people to get neti pots or yeah. Stuff like that. Like, <laughs> but ultimately, that's a really gross feeling. It's it is disgusting. too. Like these, when I first started parasite cleansing, I could feel them creeping in my na my nostrils. And I was like, you hear right, them too I, in I your ears. I gotta focus on something else. In my ears yeah. and my eyes. My eyes. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I can't focus on this. I know they're dying off. But I always remind people that, you know, these are common Herxheimer reactions. It's good, but it feels bad. It's creepy <laughs> AF, right? And it's just like, oh my gosh, I want to get this out of my body. And then that gives you the tendency to want to do more of it and to do it faster. But then you're only going to have more symptoms. But once you once you overcome that, that hurdle, you're like, oh, finally, now I'm on the road to... For people who haven't done it, yes, it does feel this way and it sounds bad. But for the most part, each uncomfortable symptom only lasts for like five to 10 days tops. And then a new weird symptom happens. <laughs> so that's the light at that tunnel. <laughs> it, really, uh, it really does. And so uh, so let's talk about the ways that you cleanse your body. Now, I know you've got some unconventional ways uh, other than herbs. And so, and I, lo I love this because when I first started learning about parasite cleansing, I started to dive more into some of these different ways that, you know, mainstream media has told us are bad or toxic or things that, you know, are harmful to our body. But in reality, we're actually introducing uh, salts and hydrochloric acid back into our body. So let's talk about, I know you have very detailed protocols, but let's, for the sake of this show, since yes. we only keep it about an hour, let's talk about the main ones that people yes. can research. And if they want to know more, we can guide them to your to your website. <laughs> exactly. I've tried to make it as easy as possible and I try to go slow. So yes, um, I my stage zero is to make sure that you have enough trace minerals. Otherwise, no matter what you take is going to work because you need magnesium, potassium, uh, iodine, sodium to even carry things to your cells. And a lot of people, I know I was one of them. I felt a relief going to the ER. And like, if I was sick or having allergies, there was something about going to the ER that made me feel better. And that's why people go and have this driving force. And 
I now know it is the saline bag. Anyone who goes to the ER gets immediately saline. And that's what all they needed. Just go home after that. That's all you it's Like need. electrolytes. <laughs> electrolytes and the trace minerals. Like that is all that many people need to get over a lot of things. Because if you just give your body that fuel, that electrolytes, those minerals, it will start doing its own job a lot of times. So, um... Make sure you have a good trace mineral, ionic trace minerals. I have a liquid form. I put it on my food, in my dressings, in my drinks. It kind of just makes everything kind of taste like Gatorade um, and whatever. I love it. So that's step one. Uh, and then my real step one, stage one, is going to be herbs or oxy powder. Because a lot of people who have... Um, nut allergies, you might want to stay away from the herbs because there are a lot of like black walnut mm -hmm. snuck into a lot of these. So you might have a reaction like I had with the pine trees. So we can just avoid that and either do um, wormwood for oh. a month or two or mm -hmm. oxy powder pills okay. for a month or two. And this is going to be going slow. You might not even see any bugs in the toilet, but you're probably killing thousands of these tiny micro bugs in your white blood cells. So the oxy powder is just oxygenating the cells. Is that what that's doing? It's kind of like um, scrubbing bubbles, chlorophyll, I guess, you know, yeah. it brings that oxygen back into the cells. Okay. Yes. And um, oxygen is going to break blood clots up. If we do have blood clots, it's going to, we need oxygen. And the good news is I also like oxygen products like oxidizers because if you are on prescribed medications, all of those prescribed medications know that your body carries oxygen and it's ready to be used with oxygen. So I also like talking about everything I'm talking about today because you're, if you are on prescribed medicines, it can usually go hand in hand with these antiparasitics. Yeah. Um, and, so and that's ozone like too, that ozone therapy, I, I, they've got ozonated saunas here in where I am. And oh my goodness, I, I was coming down with COVID. I was getting sick. And, uh, my, one of the wellness centers here said, get your butt over here, get in the oxygen sauna. Mm -hmm. I was gone. It was gone within a day gone. or two. It gone. was gone. <laughs> so let's talk about ozone. Okay. So ozone and is basically my stage two process. And there are three different oxidizers that are almost identical. And why I say that is because um, they're used in our water treatment facilities. And everyone goes, eh, they put fluoride in the water, so water treatment's bad. No, no, no. They need the water to be so pure for when they do put bad stuff like fluoride that it'll carry through. Wow. So in order to get the water pure, you kind of do want to listen to them because they need it pure to do what they do later on in the process. And what they do is UV light, um, ozone, hydrogen peroxide, and chlorine dioxide. It's not the same chlorine that goes in your pool. It's actually the chlorine dioxide that your body makes. So these are the three things that are in all of these studies that it's safe to take. These are the three things that if they try to see how a bug is killed, usually it's they use all three and usually they act exactly the same way. So to me, ozone is hydrogen peroxide, is chlorine dioxide. They're very similar. Um, and I started off with chlorine dioxide. Um, that's how I did it. I did a hardcore protocol. I don't want anyone to do the protocol I did because it was 36 drops of chlorine dioxide a day, wow. for 21 days for three months. And yeah, I got rid of autism ticks and everything, but I was asleep. And that, that's what they use for Giardia in certain really intense because chlorine dioxide is like, uh, it's a disinfectant, right? And when we yeah. add it to d drinking water, it destroys bacteria, viruses, and all different types of parasites, but they use it for cryptosporidium, I believe. And yep. <laughs> those are some big time parasites. Big. <laughs> so I saw everything come out. I don't want anyone to do 36 <laughs> drops of chlorine dioxide, but I needed to. So it's fine. I did it. I'm alive. That was your uh, <laughs> I, it's funny because these things, um, a lot of the weight, wait, like weightlifters, um, they know about a lot of this stuff because the way they use oxidizers is to bulk up muscle. Our muscles need oxygen to build. So a lot of these things are like actually big in the way, uh, bodybuilder community for that reason. So 
even though I didn't work out at all, I had a six pack when I was done with my chlorine dioxide cleanse. I had like, I was toned because it just feeds your muscles and I was throwing up a lot. So maybe that was my ab exercise. <laughs> but um, I told, I, after doing that, I'm like, oh my God, I hope no one does that. I hope no one has to go through what I just went through. So I realized, okay, I wish I would have done Wormwood for three months first. I wish I would have done 10 drops of chlorine dioxide instead of 36 drops. It still kills all the little bugs that will kill the bigger bugs. Um, but you won't have the reactions basically. That's like you put yourself in so much shock and we don't have to do that while detoxing. And I, I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, like a crock pot. We're going to slowly warm mm -hmm. it up. So then we nab them and they don't even really realize they're getting nabbed, right? <laughs> yes. And if, if you do it quick, they do realize they're getting nabbed and they fight back hard. They release ammonia. A lot of people go, oh my God, this hydrogen peroxide tastes like ammonia. I'm like, no, the bugs yeah. that live in your nasal cavities smell it because you breathed it in and they know that you're going to drink it. So they're releasing ammonia to your whole body to let every single bug know that you're going to drink something that kills them. So they're all going to start fighting and mm -hmm. they release toxins and you smell the worst things. Now I can take chlorine dioxide and it tastes like, like lemon water. But when wow. I first started, it smelled like the Y pool, chlorine, pool. chlorine mm -hmm. pool, because all the bugs released ammonia and chlorine pools make urine smell like ammonia. And that's yeah. where the connection and is. And I, I noticed that too, when I first started cleansing my, my stool smelled like motor oil. And I'm like, whoa, like this weirdest is, smells come out of you. Very strange smell. So be, so listeners be aware of that. Be aware that you're going to have be significant aware. body odor. You're yeah. going to have very smelly bowel movements. Your urine will smell probably. Um, so and just, then it starts not smelling and then it yes. comes out of you and then it smells like chlorine, like it smells how it went in and then, oh, try not to get cocky because literally your <laughs> SHIT doesn't stink and you're like, oh, yeah. I get it. Yes. And, and I'm at that stage too. Cause I'm like, uh, it doesn't smell anymore, you it know, and smell. that's when you know, you've gotten to the point where you're getting it to a good point, you yeah. know, it depends. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't have any bacteria making that smell. So like that bacteria is not surviving. It's a really good, your poop is your doctor. <laughs> it is. And so, okay. So you ozone is your next stage. What's the next stage after that? Okay. So it's important to realize that oxidizers do create oxidative damage. And what I mean by this is the bugs for so many reasons, <laughs> the bugs have claws and teeth and they stick yep. onto your intestines or Oh, uh, arteries, wherever they are, they hold on. So when you're killing them with chlorine dioxide, ozone, whatever, you're ripping them away from their little place, which you can totally take like pumpkin seeds, raw papaya seeds, and this negates it them paralyzed. holding on because they get paralyzed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a lot of them do fight back. A lot of them bite you, claw at you. Oh, you can feel it. <laughs> you can feel it. A lot of people, you'll see blood bright bl bright blood coming from your nose it's because they're ripping you up mm -hmm. so you have a lot of tears and rips but also um oxidizers are going to grab metal and pull it out of your body so we all have metal lodged in us and we've had scar tissue cover it but it's going to grab metal out of our tissue so that's going to create a little divot so you do have all these tiny tiny micro scars and you do want to clean up from that. So um, stage three is going to be some kind of carbon or I make fun of people taking ivermectin at stage one or stage two because it's not going to do what you think it's doing. It's really good at cleaning up. So it grabs whatever it sees and it pulls it out of you. If you're having an active if you're actively going through cancer, you don't want to do that right away. Oh, you want to no. you want to clean up first and then kill a lot of bugs and then have it come in to clean up. So stage three, after two months of wormwood, two months of chlorine dioxide by maybe the fourth or fifth month, then you can pull in ivermectin because now it can shine. We don't want to use ivermectin to kill bugs. We want it to clean up after we cleanse. So that's a good time to bring in ivermectin or uh, 
charcoal C60 zeolite spray. Lighter, or I did bentonite clay, maybe. I don't know. Bentonite, so bentonite clay charcoal are soft enough. You can use every single day during cleanse to clean up daily. And then there's bigger stuff like carbon 60 ivermectin that I would do later okay. on in cleanse. A boron, I love boron borax, but that's one of those things I would like to do a little bit later. So I call boron borax kind of a stage three tool, mainly because it is wonderful, but it's also going to make you start dropping stones. Yes. So you want to use an oxidizer or herbs to slowly round out those stones so that when you do break them, they come off in little tiny marbles that you won't feel because they'll just roll down instead of huge, jagged mineral deposits, if that makes yeah. sense. Or so, even drinking warm lemon water in the morning, I know will alleviate some of that too, if you can incorporate Chancra Pedra is the best herb okay. for that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Because I do know I've got some friends who are like, I want a parasite cleanse, but I know they've struggled with stones. And I'm like, okay, uh, you know, there, there's a protocol to this. You don't want to just dive into something because it, there's one thing about a Herxheimer reaction. There's another thing about passing stones, you know? <laughs> so I forgot. I, and when I tell people stuff, it's because I did it myself and I'm yelling at myself. I forgot to take Chanka Piedra when I was doing 36 drops a day. <laughs> So I had the worst back pain. I th I went to chiropractors. I was like, my back's broken. My back is broken. And then I realized I didn't take any stone breaker this entire time. So of course I'm dropping. And I took, I had it. I just wasn't taking it. So I took it. And within two days, my back breaking went away. And yes, it was stones. I saw them later. I was like, oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. And let alone on top of your kidney, you know, yeah. issues. I know. Having, so you know so so here we go. We're going to reiterate this again. Slowly, <laughs> slowly, guys. This isn't a, <laughs> isn't a race. Isn't a race. Um, <laughs> slow gets it done better. And like I said, like, even if you don't think it's working, it's working on your blood parasites. We have parasites everywhere. You might not be seeing six inch liver flukes come out uh -huh. with wormwood, but you're cleaning out your blood and your blood cells will be able to help out with other bigger bugs later. Yeah. And I know one, one uh, particular uh, root that helped me significantly with cleansing my blood is burdock root. I drink it as a tea. I love it. My body, I drink it at night before I go to bed. My body feels fantastic in the morning when I wake up after burdock root. So you I know, think burdock is in my scram. I, I know it's in one of my mixtures. It's good. Wonderful. So, mm -hmm. And it has a good flavor to it. I actually like it. I a little honey it tastes good <laughs> some people hate the way these herbs taste and i love clove and wormwood and other people yes. taste it and they're like oh i'm like okay fine don't do the tincture try the yeah. capsule yeah. you get used to it you really do and uh there is a technique called belly button oiling for those of you out there my dad okay so he healed his epstein-barr virus through thyme oil in his belly button by using a carrier oil of uh, coconut oil or, you know, sesame, jojoba, whatever he chose. Anything. Uh, yeah. And jo jojoba, any of those, mm -hmm. but he, his numbers for Epstein-Barr went down significantly. And he's got a doctor that, uh, she, she's fantastic. She does, you know, both Eastern and Western medicine. And I love that my dad has her in his life, Good. but she, uh, you know, and I said, dad, there's this thing called belly button oiling. And he's like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. Well, he's like, I smell like a Thanksgiving dinner every time I go to bed, but the reality is, is it, it works significantly for him. So, you yeah. know, all these things that Lexi and I are bringing up today, guys, go do your research. Don't take yeah. what you have to say as, you know, oh my gosh, they said this, or, oh my gosh, they said that really go do your research. Go. We're just planting seeds here. That's really what we're doing mm -hmm. is empowering you to go learn on your own and figure out what's best for you. You know, maybe 36 drops, you know, <laughs> I advise don't do it, but some people are dying out there and they do have to do it. So, yeah. and that's another thing. If you have stage four cancer, you might have to start at stage two and not get the 
affordability of going in slowly. That's another thing I do tell my cancer patients. And I've seen cancer turn around from a stage four to a stage one undiagnosable in a matter of like weeks. Um, we found out a family friend had stage four cancer. And then the next day I found out a, my other girlfriend had stage four. One of them decided, okay, I'll try chlorine dioxide within four weeks. One of them was passed on and one of them was not even recognizable with stage one. So yeah, and it, it's it it just really depends on on your body and what you're going through. You know, when I worked in organ donation, I oftentimes I would uh, um, observe in the operating room and on the back table when we would recover the liver, they would have to flush the liver. And at that time, I would see things coming out that I didn't know what they were. I I you know I just thought they were fatty deposits, but now I realize a lot of them were parasites. They were liver flukes. They were, they were flat. They were transparent. They were huge, you know? And so just seeing that and knowing that from the, the donor's perspective has that and going into the recipient, it's that transmission of these bugs, you know, from one organ to the next. Um, that's so funny because I went to hear people talk and there was a doctor there that pretends to do what we do, but she doesn't because she still wouldn't make money from a healed person. So she still pushes lies. And um, we're sitting down and I'm like, yeah, there's six inch liver flukes. I promise you every Huge. single person has a six inch mm -hmm. liver fluke. And she goes, if, if we, if they actually had liver flukes, you would see it on a CAT scan. I'm like, you guys do. And I pull up all these CAT scans of mm -hmm. cancer tumor. And it's just a bug. It's a yeah. worm. I'm like, no, that's not a cancer tumor, sweetie. That's a parasite. And yes. they're not telling you it's a parasite. They're telling you it's a tumor. And they can wrap themselves. I mean, the liver is one of the biggest organs. I mean, huge, you huge. know? And so huge. to have a six inch fluke is not that long. And they're flat. So yeah, they're- And they're flat and super yeah. transparent and- yeah. uh, you know, but, you know, I think that's the first thing I noticed when I started cleansing, looking in the toilet was the flukes and, and the cholesterol balls and, you know, all these things that were coming out. Such so weird stuff. Weird yes. stuff. And, weird. Uh, you know, like I said, some of you will not want to look and some of you will be really excited and take pictures and want to send. That first month is fun. That first month, everyone's looking. And then finally you just Nope, just flush. Don't even look. I don't care. I, I feel felt like I can it. Smell it. I can smell I, it. I smelt it. I felt it. I don't need to look. So, okay. So, is there another step? What's the next step after? No, really, that's it. Really, maintenance. It used to be maintenance was do it every six months, like one full moon, because you want to get them on the full moon, because that's oh, let's when they talk drop. About that, the full moon. So, remember, I spoke about the mucoid plaque, which is like a black, gooey area that all the bugs hide out in for three weeks out of the month. And then one week out of the month around the full moon, they drop into your intestines and they have orgies and they make babies and they eat. So this is why uh, even hospital staff is told oh, yeah. if you're going to remove bugs, do it on the full moon. That's the only time you can do it. And then hospital staff knows that full moons are the craziest. Those are the most suicides. Those are, <laughs> yeah, people go crazy. This is why you're going crazy is because the bugs are out and about playing inside of you. Um, it's horrible. So the full moon, it, three days before, I'm, I keep going like this because I'm detoxing right now. I just did hydrogen peroxide. I shouldn't have done it till afterwards. So I feel it just, I hear my right here clicking and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I start three days before the full moon and I go, I try to do at least 10 days. Now that I'm, I'm working with so many people, I have to be around people that have this stuff. And then um, it used to be, you can go six months without cleansing. That's not the case anymore. Not since 2020, at least. Um, I don't know if it's the 5G. I don't know what it is, but this stuff is like coming back faster. I would never go the full moon without taking anything. I, I'm always taking something. And I think that's what I learned on your podcast with Journey to Truth is I, I was doing the cleansing and just doing it all the time. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I only need to do it for seven to 10 days around the, at least the wormwood, the black, the black yeah. walnut and the clove is what I was taking. And so, and I do, I have the moon cycles mm. on my calendar but. and I say, all right, this is when I start my cleanse and this is when I can end it. And I've got to say, I'm in my, my mid forties and my cycle, my, my period is, is on every oh. single time. Yeah. And I do know that cleansing these little bugs, it's going to help you ladies 
with your cycle because they totally mess that cycle up. And now it's like, I I'm on that moon cycle. I, I, it's like, now I am, but I wasn't before totally. Yeah. Um, and that goes into infertility that goes into our endometriosis. All and, that yeah. And, yeah. Literally, um, our ovaries and uterus is all just covered with heavy metals. So of course the egg, when it does fall, it can't attach to any lining because there's metal c covering your entire uterus. So that's why when you're cleansing, you'll see metal metallic stuff come out in blood. And this is another gross thing. Like you always hear about, um, blood clots are coming out, you know, those things that look like worms. No, they're worms. That's, it's yeah. a huge detox organ. So, um, you, you will have weird periods. Just keep that up. Yeah. You'll taste the heavy metals too. I know when I first started yeah. detoxing, you taste that metallic taste in your yeah. mouth. Your body is ridding yourself of those heavy metals. And yeah. that's why, like you said, the bentonite clay, the zeolite, uh, those for me, I, you know, I do that and, and they, they detox different metals. Uh, you know, so I like the zeolite in the morning and then I do the bentonite clay, in Good. The and uh, that, it makes my body feel fantastic. And then yes. adding that burdock root tea in there, I'm like, you know, and then the dandelion tea. Yeah. Uh, so these kind of things also help not so much kill the bugs sometimes, but sometimes they get like right now I'm having a headache. So I have to go take a charcoal or a zeolite spray to, because what I'm feeling is it's grabbing stuff and pulling it. And that's like I say, they have little claws and stuff and I'm feeling that. So if I take zeolite, it'll grab them and it'll pull them into my bloodstream. And then I'll probably see yucky stuff in the morning come out of my eyes because it pushes it out of the nearest orifice it can. Absolutely. And that's yeah. why you'll get those little crusties, crusties. Uh, or crunchies or even, uh, you know, when you get sick and you blow your nose, uh, you'd see little worms in it sometimes when yeah, you're totally. boxing because they, they love the mucus. Those little things create the mucus. And I was going to say, whenever you see mucus, you, there's a bug in there. You just can't see it totally, totally. every time. Yeah. And so, you know, and you know, lemon balm is good. Cat's claw. I love that golden seal. There's uh, oregano oil, black seed oil. These are all black. the ones that I, you know, I'm guinea pig, just like you have Lexi. And they're fine. If I have money, my apothecary is like stacked <laughs> right now. I'm a little low on everything. So I'm just doing what I know works. But if I got money, I love playing with herbs. <laughs> Me too. And it's so fun. And, you know, and it's really, and I've noticed it over, at least over the last three years, you know, that first year I, I got really sick. I had a friend go to Costa Rica, came back, gave me COVID and I got really sick. Well, yeah. it was almost like my wake up call to cleanse my body very deeply. And I fasted and I parasite cleansed, I heavy metal, I yeast it, all of it, you know? Yep. And then that next year I got it just a little bit, but not as bad. And then this year, oh my gosh, I feel like a million bucks. And yeah. so it's, uh, it does take time and it does take maintenance and it takes some persistence, you know, persistence. with, with keeping with that. And so, you know, I know I, I worked at a hospital that was a uh, seventh day Adventist and they were very much against pork products. And so they would show us lots of videos of pork and parasites and, you know, all these things on it. So that, that in itself grossed me out enough to say I'm done with bacon. And so that was probably 15 years ago. And uh, sushi too, cut that out of my diet. My my ex-husband was a big uh, fisherman and he would come back and fillet the fish in front of me and I'd see parasites in the fish. So that hunters was- Hunters know, hunters know that this stuff is in animals and they're like, oh, you eat it no matter what. And I'm like, you guys, like really, that's why you have to stay away from seafood. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because seafood is so good for you in certain ways, but because of our the state of our world, they have so many toxins in them that they're not even like good. And of course, yeah, shellfish cleans the oceans of parasites and heavy metals. So you don't eat the thing that cleans. <laughs> oysters are great uh, heavy metal cleaners for the ocean. You don't eat them. Oh my God, no. I know. So it's like, once you realize all these things in dairy, dairy creates mucus and cheese. Oh my gosh, I used to love cheese so much. Yeah. So you know, and the, the reality is, is once you begin to cleanse and you feel good, when you go back to introduce things that you used to eat before, and then you feel yucky, you're like, all right, that's what's making me feel yucky. That's what's feeding the parasites. To and me, um, it's really important for even vegans to can really 
really consider eating eggs. It is necessity. Uh, glutathione is the most important uh, peptide when it comes to detox. We need it. And people who eat meat, you're getting this anyway in the meat. But like if you're a vegetarian or vegan, really at least for detox, think about bringing in eggs to your diet. This will help so much. I have so many vegans who... It did, like like I said, it doesn't matter how much you eat of something uh, good, it, your body won't absorb it. And glutathione is the answer to that. Yeah, and no, and NAC I, doesn't work. Yeah, to no. do the NAC. And I know, you know, I, I actually cut out eggs two years ago because of, I read that it holds viruses and bacteria and we test on eggs and chickens and all that. So personally, my experience, I've been good without eggs, but there's people who claim that they they need the eggs. So do your research, guys. Do what's best for you. And, that's and try it on yourself. Try a month with yourself. something. Try a month without something. And yes. just keep in journals. I have journals from everything. Like, just see how your body reacts. Also, that's important. Don't try a bunch of new things at once. Don't go out and try five new things. Because if you do have a bad reaction, you don't know which one of the five things it was. Exactly. So do something this week. Try something next week. Add it in slowly. Don't try a bunch of new things at once. Yeah, and my dad would do that. He would be like, oh, I'm going to dump this in my smoothie and this in my smoothie and this in my... And then he'd have Herxheimer reaction and not know specifically what it was. So I said, all right, dad. away from, yes. You know, once a week, maybe introduce something new or once every two weeks, give yeah, your body like. a chance to assimilate to it and then realize, can I, you know, can I do this? Can, yes. You know, I wouldn't have been able to have pine tree products. Like literally I could, now I can, now I'm yeah. fine with it. But at the first, I wouldn't have been able to. And a lot of things are telling you to put wormwood with pine tree. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do that. And I did one, one thing this week, one thing next week. And like you said, two weeks, a month is even better, but yeah. 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 And so it's, uh, it's really important to do that. If you're allergic to something, you know, there's a reason because you have an overabundance of toxins, you know, in your body. Yeah. So you, you may recognize after, well, after you're cleansing and you start maintaining, you could introduce some of those things back into your body. And like the pine, I, I was terribly, uh, allergic to pine. My, my little chore when I was, like, when I was younger was to mow the lawn and just being around pine trees, I could never have a real Christmas tree and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But now I can drink pine needle Pine needle tea and it's great, you know. I so love DMSO, which is pine. Uh, there's certain turpentines you can use, which are pine. Now I can do that, but I literally would have died. So take it easy. Like, and that's why I like herbs. Herbs are tiny. They're the size of a human. So herbs, the amount of antiparasitics they create are completely different than the amount of antiparasitics a 3000 pound tree can make. That's another thing to keep in perspective. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about chlorine dioxide. Just what are the compounds behind it? Because I know people yes. think they hear chlorine dioxide, they go and Google it and they're going to be like, oh my goodness, this is something you put in a pool and it's bleach and it's going to kill you and it's toxic. So let's talk <sighs> about that because I bet there's going to be people who are going to shut this program off because they hear that specifically, but I totally. want to talk about it because that is an option for parasite cleansing. Yes. Okay. So it is actually something that's supposed to be happening in your body. So we're supplementing a natural body function. You have hydrochloric acid in your stomach. That is your stomach acid, HCL acid. A lot of people um, take HCL enzymes every time they eat. And this is like what they do for chlorine dioxide because when they eat and there's salt on their food, the salt activates in the stomach acid and it makes chlorine dioxide gas. And then it goes into your blood and then it's oxygen in your blood. So basically what you're doing, the way that, my protocols that I learned from is you activate it outside of your body. Um, let's say just starting off slow, doing four drops of hydrochloric acid, four drops of man-made salt. It You cover it because you don't want to breathe in the fumes. And it activates into a light yellow liquid. You pour in at least four ounces of water because you did four drops. And you drink that. And you do it, you can do it three times a day. You can do it six times a day. And this is giving your body that natural chlorine dioxide. That's great. And you can do the same thing with hydrogen peroxide too. Yeah, and celery juice does that too. Uh, I was reading about that. But Lexi... 
when you create that substance, is it important to do it in glass, similar to like bentonite clay or zeolite, because you don't want it to be like a, like you add a silver spoon, you want to use a wooden spoon or a plastic spoon or glass? I cannot tell you how many pictures of Yetis I've gotten, those okay. metal canisters and they're corroded and they're like, I shouldn't be using this in the Yeti, right? And I'm like, no, it has to be glass. All my things I use are glass or BPA free plastic. Okay. Um, because it is a corroder. It chelates metals. It corrodes metals. That's why we're using it in our body, but you don't want to put it, like you said, in any kind of metallic um, serving okay. type okay. container. Good to know, and right? you want to keep it cold because you don't want it to evaporate. You want to keep it covered because you don't want it to evaporate. Sometimes just throwing in um, ice water, like ice is enough um, if you're taking it at work um, with a covered lid. Yeah. Okay. So where can people find, find this chlorine dioxide? Cause I know, you know, I looked on Amazon, Amazon, it's very pricey and we can't always trust what's on Amazon. I so know. what, you know, do you have a, a, a site or somewhere where people can go to find a good quality product of this? Um, they always yell at me for <laughs> letting them know that I'm telling them to peek it chlorine dioxide here. It's kvlabs.com. Uh, They're the only place I trust for it. I've been getting chlorine dioxide there for years. Uh, for the package, it's $30, 30 or 35 but like the kit lasts a long time. If you're not using it for enemas mm -hmm. or like humidifiers, then that one kit will last like six months. Um, I use it to clean my produce. My cats are on it because cats carry this. Yes. Um, I, like I use it daily. So mine go through it way quicker. But if you're just simply doing like less than 15 drops a day uh, for half of the month, you and your family, it'll last a long time. KVLab.com, chlorine dioxide products. Now that's another thing. I like chlorine dioxide with HCl as the acid, not citric. I don't like citric acid and it's harsher on the it stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because HCL, our body's naturally creating it. And that's and, how I see it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so Lexi, where can people go to find these protocols? Where can people reach out yeah. to you? How can they connect with you? Because it's important that uh, they have a deeper understanding of this before they just dive right into it. <laughs> um, I have like step one, step two, step three. What is Herxheimer? What is die off? I have all these videos already done at linktree.com forward slash beyond the biohacking. Or you can go straight to my Rumble channel, rumble.com, and then just look up Ricky Leaks, R-I-K-I-L-E-A-K-S. Um, those two places are where we are at for now. And then I'll send you all my links so you can put it down. That's perfect. Well, Lexi, I appreciate your time today. I know for all of you, this was probably a lot of information. This was called a crash course in parasite cleansing for a reason because- yes. There is so much more information out there. There's so much more detail that we did not go into today. Oh, yeah. but that's why I just wanted to do an introduction to parasite cleansing. I wanted to plant some seeds. And yeah. as always, I encourage each and every one of you to do your own research. Do what's best for you. Lexi and I are here sharing our knowledge and wisdom of what we have gone through, our protocols and how we utilize them doesn't mean it's all going to be perfectly fit in a box for each and every one of you. So it's really important that you do your research, do what's best for you, listen to your intuition as always. And thank you, Lexi. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the energy that and work that yeah. you have put into this. <laughs> thank you. Help people uh, heal and to help people get back to our own organic, natural way of living. Thank you so much for having me, you guys, and uh, take it take it easy on yourself. Forgive yourself. Be kind to yourself. Loving yourself is going to get you really, really far in this whole mission. Thank you. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.